Hello, and welcome to another edition of IWF's Digital Programming. We're hosting weekly events highlighting the works of individuals who are shaping our present, our future, and policy, technology, culture, and more. I'm Marty Wickstrom. I'm a member of IWF United Kingdom and co-chair of what would have been, we think, the spectacular London Cornerstone Conference. I've been a member of IWF for more than 30 years in Washington, D.C., and Seattle, and for over 20 years in London. Although COVID-19 forced the cancellation of our conference, technology is allowing us to bring you some of the planned programming, including this session today on creativity. So what is creativity? How do we cultivate it? And what can we do with it? Those are some of the questions we're going to explore today. But before we begin, I'd like to just bring up a couple of points. We want your input and we want your participation. As you look at the screen, you'll see the words, ask a question under images, under our images, and you can submit your questions there or vote for the question you'd most like to hear answered. In addition, you'll see a chat section on the right side of your screen. Use this to communicate with all your other wonderful friends and all of our participants around the world. But if that's distracting, you can minimize it. Take your cursor to the upper right-hand corner of the chat field, and a carrot will appear. If you click on that, the chat will disappear from view. So with that, let's get creative. Our first guest is the quintessential ideas person. Her interests and imagination are far-ranging. She's been described as exploring without a compass. She works across disciplines and in multiple mediums, making connections and making products that no one else has ever even conceived of. They're exciting, they're beautiful, some are functional, and some even taste very, very good, yummy. I'm thrilled to welcome Pia Edson Frank, designer and goldsmith and founder of KUF Studios, which includes KUF Cakes, KUF Ideation, and also Brick Studios. So welcome, Kia. Thank you. Thank you oh, so much. Great to be with you today and have you with all of us. Uh, it's amazing to be here. Yeah. Ideation might be an unfamiliar term for some of us. Is it another word for creativity? I mean, not really, but uh, still kind of. It's um, creativity is can be defined of um, the use of ideas or as the use of ideas to create something or come up with a solution and ideation is the ideas process of of that part so it's where we focus on the development of those ideas that create something um so it's about going wide it's about expanding um it's about coming up with new connections so ideas happen when connections are made new connections are made so it's about Ideation process is where you, you generate all these new ideas, no, all these new connections, sorry, um, and, and create as many new connectors or, or loose ends to build like a 3D web of connectors like that you can kind of tap into that are waiting to be connected so you can get new ideas. That's fantastic. But this sort of mental exercise is sometimes you know, perceived as being exclusive and an exclusive domain to artists or musicians, dancers, writers, there are maybe tech geniuses. Um, uh -huh. Is it? it? I mean, first of all, it's it for me, it's a very hands on process more than it's a, a mental exercise as such. But um, I mean, I use my hands, I make stuff. Uh, I put my brain into my hands, so to speak. But but no, I mean, creativity is often seen as this pristine gift that people are born with and like it's reserved for a small group of what you just said, like described as geniuses. Um, and, it's, and it's really not. I mean, creativity is available to all of us. It's um, not only available, I would say it's one of the reasons why we're human and why we, we're here. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the guy who invented fire or not invented fire but came up with a way of making fire didn't hammer two stones together and created sparks to you know 
get world recognition, I'm pretty sure that that person was pretty chuffed with being able to control a way to heat up your, their, like their cave and their family and get a light by night without having to like risk their lives to go into wildfire to pick up a branch, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's way more um, about these uh basically basically connections and 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 figuring out how to uh control your connections and how to con and see them when they're happening and also creativity is definitely something that we're born with everyone is constantly thinking creatively about something it's just a way of solving some problem uh yeah. it's it's not this divine gift that we that is only a limited group. Only limited to the few. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. Well, but I know you have, you have some images that, that maybe that would be helpful if you put up your images because you illustrate your creative process. And yes. maybe you can explain that uh, and explain what we're seeing and then what your brain is doing when you're looking at these images. Yes, so I'm just, uh, before I put the images up, I'm just gonna explain a little bit what we're looking at. So. Um, when I was studying at RCA, studying gold, like, and as a goldsmith, but when I was studying at RCA, I was dead scared of like running dry of ideas or having already gotten my best ideas. So I wanted to um, make up a way that that wouldn't happen. Um, and I was looking at my fellow students and they were focusing really hard on like a goal. For example, the final show, they already knew what they were going to make like six months in advance. And I thought that was very limiting um, because if you're just really focused on the goal it's really hard to deviate from that goal and you can't really um get nothing new comes up basically you, you're not uh how can you say you're not challenged in any way but let me just show you what happened because i decided some like really simple way of of working was to uh i don't know if it's sharing it now uh, was to just work with whatever was on my table uh, in front of me and make a model a day for three months and just see where it would take me, not having a goal in mind at all. Another thing to keep in mind is I was a student, so I didn't have like tons of money. And uh, so I was just working with what I had a hand, at hand. And in front of me, I had a piece of paper and I thought it would be interesting to like see how I can expand this piece of paper the most uh, in different ways. How How that would just be a way to start off my brain, basically. So I started off with with uh, this, which is, well, this is not the first model I made, but just playing around with paper, cutting it up, folding it in different ways to see, see what actually come from it. And then playing up with multiple layers of paper and just seeing what comes from it, not being scared of making ugly models. Um, or like this is full of tape and like it's ripped and stuff like that. Um, I also had other stuff on my desk. So this is a, a ring box um, where I made a, a ring out of string. And I thought this opening and closing of a structure was interesting. So I combined it with the paper I had just worked with and started making these pop-up sculpture books, basically, that you could just close and put into your um, bookshelf. I kept on exploring this. Uh, pop up books and strings. Um, and I'm also working a little bit with the more static element of it. Just, just literally just coming up with whatever I thought was interesting and what I just learned from the model I just made before. Um, this one I then wanted to start moving again or like making it anti-static. And I thought, what if I change the materials and, and change it into elastics? Um, so I changed the string into elastic and I uh, put in this extra layer and then I could start organizing the strings in new ways depending on where uh, this extra layer was. Next model I then made, I, I put instead of strings, I put ribbon in um, and I started twisting these ribbon. Uh, and then I, I made it into this screen that was picked up by the college and we started filing a patent for a cordless window blind system. That has kind of just, you know, I didn't know what I had made, but that was what it became. Um, and patenting is a horrendous process. 
Um, but uh, I mean, it's long and you have to do a lot of research. Um, but it did turn into like one part of my, my graduation show, this window blind system. But while I was patenting or like searching for the patent through the patent register and finding like other window blind systems and stuff like that, I continued on the string structure exploration because I thought there was something interesting in that, which turned into my second part of my graduation show, which are these huge string structures that are collapsible and highlights like corner of the existing uh, architecture basically so that is is um, that was my first process of making coming up with ideas through working with my hands and just making a model a day to see where it, it took me um, and yeah there's there's tons of those models that never turned into anything but and then there's tons of them that I've, I've turned into something later on so it's just a lot of connections basically that was made in that process Tell us about building a model a day and uh, taking that approach. And that, I mean, you must have to be very disciplined in order to do that. Well, I mean, I don't think it's it's like it's it, it, it's all about getting into rhythm rhythm of things. Uh, the the build, building a model a day is like I'm, I'm obviously not doing it every day because. Can't, I can't sit and spend 15 hours on a string model every day. But um, but it is, it, I mean, when I have time to do it, it is something that I've, I've incorporated into my work day and, and uh, it is a way of working. It is by making something and not being scared of like making something ugly, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, your job is to build objects, but for most of us, I guess, this isn't the case. How how is your model a day approach applicable to what we do? Um, so I mean, I I get ideas for a living, and and because I work with my hands, it turns into to objects or models. Um, but this process of of doing something every day is applicable to everything. I would say. I mean, it's it's this. Question of, for me, it, it was to break down a humongous task into something manageable, uh, and and giving myself the freedom to come up with new. Um, if you want to write a book, I mean, it's it's also a humongous task. How do you break it down? Uh, you write a sentence a day. It's like, how do you eat an elephant? You eat it one bite at a time, right? So how do you? Uh, write a song one verse a day verse a day or how do you clean up your attic one box at a time so it's all about like breaking it down into manageable tasks um, and and you know the hardest part is usually getting started so as soon as you've overcome the task of getting started with something which would be write a sentence for your book or not even for your book just write a sentence of whatever happens you trick your brain to go into that habit that it is to write something and to think about what it is you're writing, even though you're just writing gibberish. Um, then your brain will naturally guide you into your old habit or your habit of, of what you used to do. So it, and then you've started and you haven't even really noticed. Yeah, but you talk a bit about procrastination and that's kind of a bad name for for some of us, but you view it as necessary. Can you explain that? I mean, uh, probably not really strictly necessary. <laughs> I wish I wish it wasn't a part of like that we had to deal with uh, because it it is uh, really well, annoying. None of us want to clean out the boxes in our attics. So how do you get past that? <laughs> no, but, but I mean, let, yeah, just to 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 the the whole procrastination thing. It is giving a bad name, and I am, I, I've been spending a lot of time wondering how I could turn it into my advantage because I discovered that you get like these eureka moments when you're doing the dishes or in the shower or on the bike, uh, and then something just falls into place, and I just doubt that that's. Uh, coincidental right so I looked a little bit into how the brain works and actually we can only focus on one task at hand for a very limited time 25 minutes or so um, and then we need a break for the brain to digest what it's been focusing on for quite a while and in that break if you give your brain a chance to 
completely relax. You can actually do whatever you want and you can structure your procrastination in a way where you give it five minutes and you set an alarm and you can do exactly what you want in those five minutes. But as soon as the alarm goes off, you go back to your task at hand and you have another 25 minutes with that task. It's a well-known technique for like writing stuff. It's called the Pomodoro technique. And I kind of just stripped it into to what I'm doing. But also then you only have, you know you only have to focus for 25 minutes, which makes again the task smaller and makes you want to procrastinate less because it's not as big an overwhelming task that you're trying to get around by not doing it, basically. So by structuring my day, I've actually turned procrastination into an advantage for myself where I can trick myself to get more of these eureka moments that, that occurs every now and then. But I, I, I can get way more of them by structuring my day and putting procrastination into a little box. Mm -hmm. And how about failure? You also talk about failure as an important process. Can you explain that? Failure is seen as this horrendous thing. That um, failure is like we've been taught not to fail. We we like the education system, our work system, everything is set up for us only to succeed and and never to fail. Actually, there's tons to be learned in failure. First of all, you you learn about your process. You learn what went wrong. Uh, and and you and you can improve that. You also gain a new perspective of what happened. Maybe something super beautiful came out of it um, that you can use for something else. Uh, and and it makes you uh, or it, like the more you fail, it takes the pressure off failing. So by making again, it's all about making a big task small. If you make a small task it doesn't hurt so much to fail it. And then you get used to failing and you get used to learning how to, to look at this uh, and learn from it. And then it's not so hard next time. It's not so dangerous next time. And, and actually something beautiful can come from it. That's, that's really helpful. Hmm, that's so great. Your latest product is Brick Chocolate. Mm -hmm. And Brick is going to be uh, one of the pop-up shops at the London conference. So we're very sad. And you also had offered uh, some brick chocolate for every one of our gift bags. So everyone was going to have a chance to taste, taste brick if they were in London. But uh, we didn't have that chance firsthand. So we're really but, uh, glad to at least get to know a bit about brick today. But mm -hmm. it was actually born from a failure. Can you tell us that story? I mean, brick was born from failure. And it was born from not having an idea of what I was working on. And it was born from a healthy portion of, of procrastination, um, actually. So, so what it was that I, I started making chocolate or like working with cakes. And I, at one point I had to temper like kilos of chocolate and I messed it up royally. Uh, and it all went grainy and weird and I couldn't use it for what it was I was supposed to do. And I had no idea what happened because I had very limited knowledge of chocolate at the time um, and and uh, yeah and it dried up and it turned weird and gray and not very pretty and then I smashed it up and inside I could see that there's like these layers of, of gray and white and black and like it looked like natural stone uh, and I had all these little chips now that look like natural stone chips basically um and i had a few days earlier uh spend a good part of the day uh, watching youtube videos falling into a rabbit hole of how stuff was made and one of the things that was made was uh terrazzo chocolate so i thought that maybe i could put all these little chips and, and treat them like put them into the process of making terrazzo chocolate and see or terrazzo and see if i could make terrazzo chocolate so i tried it out and it looked like terrazzo chocolate made out of marble and stone, and it was quite amazing. So it was really, you know, born from from failure and procrastination and being a beginner, but also it can uh, be rephrased to be a, a new connection that's born out of open mindedness and um, and and uh, like that that creates a new idea, basically. Yeah. 
That so then uh, you actually uh, have a collaborator. And I'd like to bring your collaborator into the conversation now. She's a strategist with deep experience in food retailing. Rafaela Baruso is the business brain behind Brick. And Rafaela, it's great to have you with us today. She's so, amazing. <laughs> she's worth waiting for. She's worth waiting for. <laughs> Ah, there she is. The well, Rafaela, welcome. Thank to you. Our, to our conference in IWF. Uh, Rafaela, your creative approach and process is very different from Kia's. Tell us about it. Yeah, I, I think after, you know, um, after I met Kia, I, um, I started to shift my um, idea of uh, creativity. So I um, very often was defined in my workplace or amongst friends as a creative person. But once you meet Kia, you just think the talent and imagination of this girl is amazing. So what am I actually, you know, and uh, how do I relate to somebody like her in order to find the right language also to communicate? Uh, so I met Kia and uh, uh, the first time I saw her work, I thought it was incredibly original. So I uh, always try to see and uh, identify what is uh, not only different, but slightly um, more um, into you know, the opportunity to open a new vision for everybody. So when I saw her work, I could easily relate it to my work. So sometimes working with numbers or with strategies, trying to uh, relate to people in order to make them see something different. So she gave me a wonderful idea in terms of uh, how something that looks like marble is actually edible and uh, how people, how would people relate to that? And this is what I think is my creative approach is uh, Everybody, you know, is uh, uh, creative, as Kia said, and uh, I think the answer is uh, we all master something very well, and we are, you know, a disaster something else. How do we just uh, match the two? And what is the new thing, the new connection that comes out of it? Mm -hmm. So that's uh, how I think. Well, many people um, probably approach innovation this way, and they see a problem and they try to find a solution. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I make marble edible and, and beautiful for people to eat? Um, is that your method, is to find a problem and find the solution? I Sometimes I think uh, where is the, wherever there is a problem, they say there is a solution. So I think my way is actually to approach solutions first, and it's even you know, a mistake, a uh, difficult situation. I think IKEA is a witness to this. I think sometimes that you already have a solution in a problem. Sometimes it's just that the actual steps to get to the solution are a bit ruffled, you know, are just a bit confused, they're not clear that the actual elements are in the problem. The problem is just a structure. So that's how I see it. All the data is available, but maybe some of the steps uh, have been, uh, you know, jumped or skipped because of procrastination, because of uh, negligence or any other uh, sort of issue. And um, I think that's uh, how I like to think. It's a solution or it's a situation. Then you have two sides and you can decide which way you're going to put your attention on. Yeah, yeah. But Kia, you aren't really looking for solutions at all, are you? I, I think you find that too confining. Is that right? Uh, I am. Look, I mean, it's. I think that's. I, I kind of am looking for solutions actually all the time, uh, but I just don't really recognize it. I think it's. It's kind of just something that pops up, and then it turns. It, at some point, it will turn into a solution to something that I'm working on, but it might not be a solution at the moment that I'm thinking of it if that makes any sense. But but like sometimes I, you know, come up with something that's just not ready for like it's it's it hasn't found its connection yet. So it's there's there's uh it's not really a solution to anything yet. It's just something that's free floating around. 
Yeah. So but I am I am solving things. I mean, yeah. you kind of have to when you're in a tiny business. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, um, and probably not fallible. Do you like to work with other people to generate ideas? Do you like to be around others and bounce things off? Or would you rather work more independently and more um, um, in, in more of, a, of an isolated way? Um, for me, like the entire ideation process, I don't actually need much uh, interference in that from other people. Or, you know, but but I like I I know how important it is to, to to do that, so I also do it sometimes. But for me, it's more of getting an idea and then showing it to someone and then getting the feedback. But actually, for the entire ideation process, I'm not super inclusive. I think. Yeah. But I think it's the sort of not the opposite but it's very different for me because uh, what i actually like to do is to generate or create a space for kia to be uh, as uh, imaginative and inspired as possible so for me it's actually you know that sort of thing. Hmm. it's that synergy that sort of allows and work to come up for what it is. So is only if I leave that space, she can generate or come up with new connections. And sometimes what I do, I if I'm out about whatever, I just buy ingredients, I buy things, because I think, you know, and there was a very funny episode around, the, you know, Christmas time, I saw this wonderful new mushroom powder that I thought is going to be a super great inspiration that turned out to be a total failure because sometimes uh, you might think imagination might cover everything but then it's technique also and uh, as Kia said discipline there is uh, the constrictions of the matter but also the pleasure of uh, just uh, overcoming those boundaries but not always uh, with the success you have in mind definitely not yeah. Um, now, Kia, almost all your work has been tactile and visual, but now there's brick, and you're experimenting with taste. Um, can you tell us a little bit in the excitement of opening up a whole new sense, which is taste, and tell us why chocolate is your preferred medium? It's brilliant. So it's uh, that whole thing of being able to add flavor and taste into design and starting designing flavors and taste. Um, is is mind blowing and amazing and just adds a whole new like layer to designing and to experiencing what it is that you you're doing like my main i'm designing for curiosity basically so i think it's it, like i want people to be curious about what they're doing so it doesn't have to only look amazing and you want to explore the looks of it but now that you can also taste it it adds a whole new layer to it and and we're working a lot with layered flavors so the flavors come out at different times so you can even like you know salted caramel and passion fruit bar you can even count six or seven seconds and you can see them going from salted or from caramel to salt and then after seven seconds you they passion fruit hits right so you like you get all these different flavors throughout the, the fight as well as gradient flavors, which is not probably the most common thing in the world, but a flavor that changes throughout a cake or changes throughout a chocolate bar. Um, so, so no two bites are alike. I think that's, I mean, amazingly fun <laughs> to, to work with that and to explore chocolate as, as a new material. So basically all that I'm, I'm working with, cakes or chocolates or anything doesn't have to be edible it, our materials right so chocolate is just a new material for me that i'm exploring at the moment to see where it can go both visually and and in flavor and um yeah i'm having a lot of fun with it but like something else will stick my brain probably very soon and then i'll start exploring that and see where that leads me i don't know what that i means. have a question i have a question from the audience as they're mm -hmm. out asking uh, do you use music as part of your creative process? Mm -hmm. Either one of you. I don't actually use that much music. Or oh, I mean, I'm I'm I, I I listen a lot to books and podcasts and stuff. 
uh, and sometimes music, but sometimes I, I, I stress out of choosing music. So it's, um, I never really grew up with a lot of music around me. So it's, it's, it's not like my go-to creative, like something to get my anything flowing. Um, but I know it's very different for Rambella. Yes, <laughs> I think I work mostly with music. So I am I'm just the opposite. And sometimes for me, music is uh, what um, what brings me back to a very centered point in particular. And I know it's going to sound very boring for most people probably, but I love Excel. So sometimes if I'm working on a very complex uh, a file or, or document, sometimes music is what allows me to spot the oddities and to maybe recalibrate some formulas that just uh, it helps my logical thinking, even though it is exactly the opposite. I think what it does to my brain is just brings it in balance somehow. So it allows me to cool down. Yeah. You know, Raffaella, one thing I realized that we really haven't spoken about, and this is, uh, we haven't spoken about really brick. It's this beautiful chocolate. It's a very unusual form. Can you describe this for all of our, um, all of our friends on, on this call? Because it, I'm, I, we've talked about how it looks like marble or it looks tactile, but can you talk a little bit about that and so, also maybe some of the flavors that you're using? Yeah. I can show you a picture while you do that, if you want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't start talking and then I'll, I'll yeah. put it down. Uh, can, I don't know if you can show it. Oh, sure, no, I don't know. I don't know. The very first time I met here, she just uh, came to see me with uh, a chocolate that looked like concrete. So my first impression was, of course, my technical brain after so many years in chocolate went like, oh my God, wrong tempering. Just to also talk holes, uh, this is not allowed. So it's uh, all your critical thinking comes up uh, and uh, you miss the, the product in his, uh, uh, sort of as an overall. And then you look at this uh, thing she created and you think, wait, if I wasn't in the chocolate field, this looks uh, like concrete and nobody would expect to eat concrete. So sometimes we pay very little attention, even though you are given the most wonderful and exquisitely made chocolate. Sometimes your brain is triggered by the fact that you have an expectation about that product. So there is something in your brain that says, it's chocolate is going to be good. And either way, your expectations are turning that piece of chocolate into something you know already somehow because that's how you know our habits work. So whenever you see a one of our creations, it's uh, you are deceived. So your brain doesn't have an expectation. So literally, when you have the first bite, you just uh, melt the chocolate in your mouth. It's, uh, you know, I say probably good eight, nine, 10 seconds, where your brain doesn't know what is actually, it's got a visual impression of something and a taste that is completely, you know, the unexpected about that material you're holding in your hands. He and I attended a couple of uh, events where people are really just taking the tiles in their hands and smash them because they think it's marble. So they try them, they break, because it's uh, something you're not used to. So is that moment of surprise that sort of provides uh, an enormous amount of pleasure because it's not only something unexpected, it's chocolate. So I think the texture, the melting point, the cocoa butter, uh, the overall experience is very uh, rewarding, I think. It's actually you know, a, a surprise. Um, yeah, I have a question from the audience. Uh, someone's interested in, in your background. And I will yeah. say, I know that you grew up in Copenhagen, so um, a very creative city, and now a very creative city in food. But um, they're asking, uh, do you have scientific training also? You spoke about the brain several times, but you went. You have a degree in fine arts and you have a, a history in fine arts, but um, do you have a history in science also? No, I just always had a, a, a 
huge interest in it. So I think when I was finishing high school, it was very, like I didn't think that I was going to be a designer or, or anything like that. I actually thought I was going to be a, a what's it called, a biologist that, I, now I forgot the name, microbiologist looking into genes and, and, and like how, how that's, that whole setup and those functions and how, how your molecules and your, your cells work and all these kind of things. So it's just, it's a natural interest for me. I think the brain is wildly exciting. Um, and I've, I've been looking into, into it in my ways, in my own ways, because I, I just take what I can use basically when I'm researching something. So researching procrastination, researching failure, researching uh, the advantages of being a beginner and, and not knowing what you're working on and not being able to follow any rules and then coming up with something new from that. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it just comes out of sheer interest, really. It's, uh, it's, I don't have the proper education as such. I just take the bits that I can use, <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. And, and somebody's asking if creativity, if you think that creativity and exploring, do you think they're al they are alike or they're different for either one of you? If they are what, sorry? If creativity and exploring are alike or are they different? They are alike. Mm. Uh, uh, for me, I mean, I would definitely say that, that exploration is a huge part of creativity, but creativity is such a broad term and again, I think we should be careful of not pigeonholing it into this pristine thing uh, because it is literally just a way to come up with solutions and like keeping an agile brain. And, and the better you are at coming up with solutions to stuff, the better you are at, at, at you know, coming up with ideas. And some people are better at it than others are. And obviously that can also be trained. But I think that through exploration, you will explore so much new and you will uh, find come up with new ideas and you will uh, see new things that you, you you've like it it is an extremely important part of being a creative or just create anything basically yeah yeah another question um do you think it helps the creative process to be hyper aware to see and experience one's surroundings and how do each of you keep this open sense? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but one of the few things I'll reply. So I think, as Kia said, is an approach. I think allowing yourself to be curious and allowing yourself to have the time to explore things and fail maybe in your exploration is, is the key to be hypersensitive. I don't know if it's the, the, the word I would have used, but surely is the key to be open, is the key to allow something else, almost different, you know, it's flexibility somehow. It's looking into other fields and letting those information sink or somewhere be deposited in your brain for one day just to turn out out of the blue as an information, as a key element for something completely different. It's about, I think it's all about putting attention on, on yourself rather than on the goal outside at times. Yeah. And again, I'm just going to turn the attention to connections. So you, you like the more aware you are of, of the connections happening in front of you, uh, the, the, the more ideas you'll get. So the most important thing is almost being able to pick up on, on what's actually happening and, and being, yeah, aware, keep, keep an awareness of, of the thoughts that are happening and, and, the, and the things they're connecting to and, and the work you're working on. So, yeah. Another question, you, you've had to deal with two pretty uh, big events in, in your history, uh, first Brexit, which was uh, quite complicated, and now COVID-19. Um, do you think these events have made uh, creative thinking imperative? Have made creative thoughts, sorry? Uh, creative, have they made creativity imperative to you? 
you go, Rebecca. To, to get through these. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> she just said you go Rafaela so I think I think so is that you know if uh, I once again I'll go back to what we said earlier on it's about flexibility and Kia mentioned having an agile mind um, we uh, one thing is obvious that this situation is much bigger than any one of us and uh, the idea of uh, thinking of this as uh, on individual basis I believe it might be daunting and once again might be scary. So I think, uh, first of all, the uh, possibility to open, to look at the fact that we're all in the same situation will is a possibility that is provided to all of us to work, uh, first of all, with other people in a different way, in a community, helping each other, just uh, you know small little things of based on the awareness that uh, the business model we might have used to date might be obsolete and uh, flexibility meaning with this uh, exploring what uh, others have been doing in their field might be an inspiration for us or has been an inspiration for us in the past uh, six seven weeks yeah, yeah. And also, I mean, we have to, we've been pivoting every day for the last two months, right? Trying to figure out what will happen next and and working with these very wishy-washy guidelines um, that we also work with or are working with in, in uh, Brexit times where we didn't, like, we, we set our entire business up not knowing anything about export, import rules, shipping, all these kind of things. So we set up a, a, a business that was free from that. So we, we traveled out ourselves. We were much more based on doing workshops and events and going somewhere and being a part of uh, the, the local economy there and like working with, with locals on, on making the events happen then COVID happened and you can't be in the same room as anyone not even your business partner and and we then had to figure out how do we like we lost all the clients that we had uh gotten for like events and stuff within a couple of days so we had to like reinvent ourselves and figure out a way to be way more retail orientated but still not having to deal with shipping and import and export and all these kind of things because brexit is still really real and um, so we're just constantly trying to like navigate through this maze that are constantly changing for us. And, and, and there it's really good to, to be able to come up with solutions really quick because you have to do it literally every 10 minutes of the day. Yeah. So how do you keep an open mind through all of this? And how do you keep, uh, with all this daily discipline of having to change, how do you keep your mind open and fluid? I mean, I was, um, I went into like a hide and seek kind of situation. So, so for, for a couple of, of weeks where I, I, I couldn't deal with what like that, I again had to rethink my entire business because of something else that was happening around me, right? And then I kind of like, then Rafaela worked really hard on creating a space for me that allowed me to just do a little thing every like just do a little thing every day or just come up with a small something and just putting stuff in front of me that I needed to like kind of deal with um, and and then deal with it and then get again get over the the hurdle of what's going on and, and just kind of rethinking everything so we could work with it. Mm -hmm. So I think well, for me, oh, go ahead, please. Yeah, and it's very important at the beginning when this all happened, for example, I decided to um, sort of, I've heard this um, sort of request for 250,000 people for the NHS. So I thought, why not? I can just give two hours, three hours of my day to deliver food or medicines. So sometimes, uh, as I mentioned before, it's out of an unexpected situation that you start valuing what you have because uh, what you don't see sometimes is exactly this. When you 
start delivering to people that don't have as much as you have, then you reassess your starting point and you just uh, possibly deeply comprehend that your privileges sometimes are taken for granted. So sometimes it is losing the privilege that makes you wobble somehow, but is exactly that privilege that might be even more appreciated in situations like this. And I think by all of us, you know, I'm sure I'm speaking for all the audience in this right moment. So I think this is what kept us going. Even, you know, if we have to change the business model, I'm sure that something, you know, will come out from exercising our will and uh, but also our core values, not giving up on adding sustainable packaging, sustainable practices in our business, that is also proved to be something that we, we are actually very proud of and uh, we want to retain and share with people that maybe are not working like this, you know, so far. So we might be helpful to somebody else's. Yeah, one, one thing that might be worth mentioning in terms of Brick is that we, we do have a very sustainable approach to, to setting up a business. So first of all, we only use natural ingredients. We only use natural color, natural flavoring, flavorings. We use like home compostable uh, uh, packaging and, and we like donate to, to plant trees and stuff. So we like, for me, that has been super important and also been important to have a partner that understands that how like the importance of this because sometimes it can be scoffed at a little bit when you're starting up a new business or it's like just relax you don't have to like uh, do all these kind of things and I was like this is just a given we just have to do it this way because there's no reason to set up something in a way that's not good you know we have to do it the best way we can and then figure out along the way what is the best way like how do we produce zero waste how do we do all these things and what you can say with COVID is that there's a, a much bigger focus on this all of a sudden. This is all of a sudden uh, the the way to do things. So that's the like the 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 way the preferred way to 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 look at things. Be careful about what we've got and 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 use it in the right way. And that's been really put focused on it. So in that way, I mean, it's it's put a good focus on on the way we're doing things. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Kia, um, and that is, uh, what is, um, what's next for you? What's in mm -hmm. your great creative mind and what's, what's coming next? God knows, I don't know what, what's next to me. It, I don't have, I, like, I kind of gave up on making five-year plans. Uh, very early well i never really understood it and then i've tried and, and 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 these kind of things just kind of always crumble because i'm so driven by my interests and my interests change so rapidly um that that it's it's quite it's it's just whatever comes along i mean i love to work with food i love to work with chocolate and i would much like i would love to work way more in a development way or like make that the more the norm of uh, of uh, of working with food uh, and and also breaking down like boundaries b between fields and art and design and food and architecture and whatever I want uh, and I would like to like again <laughs> create some more connections between different fields and see what comes out of it um, and then something will definitely come out of something i mean i'm 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 always i'm already like struggling to stay put in terrazzo chocolate you know so i'm <laughs> i'm i'm already a little bit on to the next thing uh, which could be like sugar or anything right now like the immediate thing but it could also be that i mean I don't know. I, I I invented a window blind system out of out of nothing. So you, you never really know where what will happen next. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Short sure. answer, I have no idea. And Raphael, is that where you come in because you put the processes yes. in? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
So sometimes it's me just that the, the word is no. That's it. So sometimes <laughs> she knows already. There are certain things that they they need to be put in perspective. And uh, I, I think that you know this is what I um, I, I honestly uh, value. Uh, of Kia is the fact that she sees no boundaries. So sometimes for me, it's like uh, providing a vessel for water. So you just uh, provide the shape to something that is uh, incredibly expensive. So um, it's the exercise of uh, organizing very quickly at times because she's also very skilled in, uh, you know, just. Uh, uh, jumping around. So I think is uh, how do you organize uh, those elements uh, to create uh, something that other people can enjoy and uh, that becomes, uh, um, you know, something replicable, that becomes scalable, but also that we can send across the ocean that doesn't, you know, sort of uh, pop up or break. So it's all these logistic questions along the way that the financial questions there are a real it's like a sudoku you just put the pieces and create mm -hmm. the right combination of numbers yeah and creating a, a space for you know like a structure where the things that i maybe lose interest in okay i make me sound like i'm all over the place all the time mm -hmm. but yeah. that I am actually quite focused, but mm. uh, but but also to create a structure where the things that I lose interest in doesn't become a chore, you know. So it's 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 uh, something that will keep developing, and that there's no like constraints in in what we're doing. So we started with terrazzo chocolate, for example, and now we've moved into this company that does like looking at textures and 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 the uh, surfaces of architectural materials and are making concrete chocolate and are working with um you know all sorts of of uh, structures in a way more experimental way than than just being confined to doing terrazzo chocolate because i mean i i, I wouldn't be able to keep myself interested in it mm. i do have a question that someone said how did the three of you meet and I will say that I wanted to have chocolate in our gift bag at the conference, and I thought it was very important. One of the things we looked at with the um, the kiosks and everyone that would be at the, at, on, on the kiosks, we wanted companies that were women-founded companies and that were British companies. So that was our initial goal. And so I called Rafaela, and uh, Rafaela had been involved with the cocoa. Uh, chocolates and with the founder Chantal. So I called Rafael and said, let me tell you what we're doing. And she said, my gosh, this sounds so interesting, so creative. I'd love to get to know your group. And that's how Kia came on the scene. And then I had the chance to go to one of your lovely events where you had literally dozens and dozens of people there. And we even got to make some of our own chocolate, which is really great and try different flavors together. Um, and you have some very inventive flavors. I, put, I think I was putting raspberry with uh, matcha, or what, what was I doing? It was pink and green, so it was very beautiful together. So, yeah, you made discs, right? Yeah. 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 That's so I don't know how you remember it. But <laughs> I don't know how you remember how we met, but that's, uh, by the way, I just had a comment that says creativity rocks. But, yeah. <laughs> Yes. I also had people asking, can we see the chocolate? Can we see the chocolate? I don't yeah, know why we didn't have it. Actually, I think it to disappear to allow the chocolate to appear, correct? Yeah, I can't share my screen, but I can't share my screen with all three of us because I actually have pictures of the chocolate. Uh, all the other chocolate, like the chocolate structures uh, or textures and all these yeah, kind of things. Maybe we can ask uh, uh, Katia if I can just jump off so you can mm -hmm. just... Uh, yeah, she or well, maybe what we could do. Oh, oh I guess you just jumped. Right. Off, I was gonna say the other thing we could do is we could try to uh, email everyone a, an image of the chocolate so you can see all the different colors and structures and textures uh, of the chocolate. But like, I'm just going to show you these because these are like we've just done these images and we can't. Uh, I'm not actually um, sending them out yet because they haven't been. Uh, edit it <laughs> basically but here the terrazzo chocolates i don't i'm not sure if you can see what's going on um that's the terrazzo chocolates that's our range 
So here we have, uh, we're starting back uh, with the rosemary and lemon chocolate on the left, and then the salted caramel and passion fruit, uh, Earl Grey and uh, dark chocolate chips. And then in the middle, the black one is uh, uh, whew, orange and sesame and charcoal. Um, the green one is the newest one of the range. That's uh, our matcha and raspberry one, which is beautiful. We just got this matcha coming from a small family-owned business from Kyoto, uh, and it's so nice. And then the last one is ruby chocolate, which is a pink chocolate, naturally pink chocolate, um, which we flavor with ginger and lemongrass and spirulina. So we are doing um, like pretty bold flavors, but we are also doing like we, we're moving away from just doing terrazzo chocolate, as I just explained before. So here we also put in some flubola, <laughs> which is actually a name, or what actually worked, uh, which is like a, a tea cake um, with, uh, with the Italian meringue. That's a gray dome you see in the middle. Italian meringue on a marzipan base with dark chocolate. And then we're working on these textures. So here I've just cast some, some gray chocolate on a piece of folded up parchment paper. Um, and sometimes we do really low key experiments. I mean, I use Lego to make my molds a lot uh, or whatever I have at hand to make something that, that maybe I don't have the actual size mold. Um, so yeah, that's a little uh, example of, of, of some of the chocolates we're doing. Then we, oh yeah, here I've, I've just copied a tile. So the tile is the one on the, on the right and on the left is the chocolate that has been cast onto the tile or from the tile so you get that structure again uh, we do that when we're working with tiling companies for example so we, we actually make their products in chocolate and they can send it out to companies and then we do like events where we do big chocolates that everyone can taste and and, um, uh, and hammer these mega tiles that are like 30 by 30 40 by 40 centimeters that are made for the for the event uh, and, and as I said, we are traveling to the events to to like talk to people and 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 design the chocolates for the event at hand, basically. So this is an event in Belgium just before the lockdown. Of actually, yeah, when when in February, beginning of February, um, where we were a part of like this immersive dinner ex experience at a design fair. So. Uh, let's see if I can get back. Oh, and that's the packaging. <laughs> um, Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Kia, I just wanted to ask you, you actually teach ideation. Um, what are the first steps you would recommend for each of us to release our own inner creativity? How do we do that? Um, make something, anything. For me, it's really important to get your hands or your brain into your hands. I know it's not for everyone. Uh, but 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 make something, write something, do something, get that box out of the attic, do something like that. Uh, but also allow yourself to be overwhelmed by the situation because it's overwhelming. And if it's, uh, I mean, if you rather want to watch Netflix all day, I think there's a space for it as well because we don't know, like, it's impossible to plan because we literally don't know what's happening tomorrow. Um, so, so... Don't but just just try something, do something. Try something, make something. Uh, don't be scared of, of failing, or don't be scared of not making something pretty. Um, just just try it out, see what happens. Maybe it catches your interest, maybe it doesn't. Or take up a new skill, even if you want to. Like if you really started to wanted to start knitting, or God knows. But I mean, then 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 just get going slowly and without being scared of failing it and see how incredibly amazing it is to not know what it is you're throwing yourself at because you, when you don't know the rules, you can't really break them. So just that's, try that. That's, that's a good point. Don't worry about the rules, especially if you don't know them. Uh, we're so <laughs> grateful to Brick for offering IWF members a 10% discount code. Uh, to purchase chocolate online. So if you go to Bricks Online, B-R-I-K-S, Bricks Shop Online, they will give um, a portion of that to support IWF and give you all a discount. So if you want to try this 
innovative, interesting, and wonderful product, uh, please go to their website and use the code IWF2020 when you check out. And I just want to say, Kia and Rafaela, it's just been a pleasure to have you and Brick Chocolate uh, and bringing that to our attention. And thank you so much for joining IWF today and showing us how to explore and think about creativity and how to make something in a different form. Uh, it's really been valuable. Um, I'd like to thank the IWF members from around the world. So great to see so many comments from people that I know around the world. So, and all of you who contributed and asked questions. So keep safe. London is absolutely beautiful today. Everything mm -hmm. is in bloom and we miss you here, but hopefully everyone will be here again with us uh, someday soon. So in the meantime, stay safe and we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you.